All right, Bobcats, so in this video, we're going to go over the SOMSO kidney model. The first thing I'll point out is some of the basic anatomy. So you have the renal cortex, which is here on the outside, and then here on the inside, this is the renal medulla. So you have the renal medulla, and then these guys are known, what's known as the renal pyramids. This is based off of its shape. It's shaped like a pyramid. In between the pyramids, you have the renal columns. So that's what these guys are. So the renal columns, they're just extensions here of the renal cortex. So the next thing we're going to go over is the renal, what's known as the renal papilla. So the renal papilla, that's what this part is over here. So renal papilla, this is also the renal papilla. Within the renal papilla, this is where if you can see all of these little pores that are right here, these pores, that's what's known as the papillary ducts. So these papillary ducts, this is where the urine is going to flow. So urine is going to flow into here, and then it gets into this, is which is known as the minor calyces. So you have the minor calyces, and then when these minor calyces, when they merge together, that's where they form what's known as the major calyces. So that's what's pointed out here. So then as urine is flowing this in this direction, you have this, which is the renal pelvis. So this is the renal pelvis. And then number three, urine is flowing down this way through the ureter. Once it travels through the ureter, it'll then get into the urinary bladder where it's stored. So now we're going to go over some of the vasculature. So you have number two, this is the renal artery. So blood is flowing here. And then the next thing that I, that I want to point out is a term that's used because it's going to turn into what's known as the segmental artery. So from over here, so this is becoming the segmental artery over here. But then once you get to this particular region here within the kidney, so you have something which is known as the renal lobes. So the, the, or the lobe of the kidney, that's what includes the renal cortex as well as the renal medulla. Hence the name, the inner lobar artery. So that's what's here. So the inner lobar artery. And then here within the cortex, this is the interlobular arteries. So that's what's coming up this way. So then the next thing is what's known as the arcuate artery. So the arcuate artery is what comes in this direction. So that's over here. Okay, so now that we know some of the, the naming of the different arteries, let's take a look, a closer look here at the cortex. So we've looked at over here, once again, this is what's representing the medulla, and then this is what's representing the cortex. And then over here at the bottom, this is the renal papilla. So we've already identified, so on the other model, we looked at this coming upwards this way. So this is the interlobar artery. So you have the interlobar artery, the arcuate artery coming this way, and then this is the interlobular artery coming up here. It's also known as the cortical radiate artery. So from there, that's where it branches into what's known as the afferent arterial. So that's coming here, feeding into this part. So as a whole, this entire structure is what's known as a renal corpuscle. And the renal corpuscle is composed of Bowman's capsule, which is here on the outside. So this is Bowman's capsule, this is Bowman's capsule. This, uh, this capillary network that's right here, this is what's known as the glomerulus. So the renal corpuscle includes the glomerulus as well as Bowman's capsule. Okay, so we've talked about the afferent arterial going here, feeding into the glomerulus. Well then, if, you're, if you think about a single red blood cell, it's traveling here, going through this glomerulus, and then it'll exit out. So when it exits out, it goes through the efferent arterial. So that's coming this way. So efferent, efferent, efferent until it gets to this capillary network. So this here is a capillary network listed as number 10. 
So that's over here. So this capillary network. From here, we're getting uh, to the venous system. So the next thing I want to point out is the two main types of nephrons. So you have cortical nephrons as well as juxtamedullary nephrons. So cortical nephrons, they're primarily found mainly here within the cortex. They're, this is what's known as, so you have the loop of Henle over here, which is part of the nephron. It doesn't, it doesn't extend deep into the medulla for the cortical nephrons, only for the juxtamedullary nephrons. So that's the second type. So see how it's extending here deep. So the naming of the capillaries is going to differ. So over here, this capillary network is this capillary network is what's, no, what's, what's known as the paratubular capillaries. So you have the paratubular capillaries here because they're surrounding some of these tubules. And then over here, this capillary network is what's known as the vasorecta for the juxtamedullary um, nephron. Okay, so now let's go, let's follow this back down. So we've already talked about this capillary network. So then from here, we're getting into the venous system. So you have the interlobular vein, and then this is the arcuate vein. So then it's coming down. So this is the inner lobar vein coming down this way. So then now we're getting back to this larger model. So then from there, once again, you have the arcuate vein coming this way. And then as it comes down, inner, the inner lobar vein until it comes up this way. So segmental would be over here. And then you have the renal vein. From the renal vein, that's what would then travel to the um, inferior vena cava. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit more about this, about the cross section here. So I've already identified like some of the vasculature. So now let's talk about some of the basic parts of the nephron. So we've already identified Bowman's capsule. So then the next thing is what's known as the proximal convoluted tubule. So that's what this is. So you have the proximal convoluted tubule and then over here, this is what's known as the distal convoluted tubule. So it's proximal based off its location because it's right near where the renal corpuscle is. So we call it the proximal convoluted tubule. From there, you have the descending limb coming down this way. So this is the thick part of it. And then this is the thin right here. So then this is descending. So that would make this going up the ascending limb. So the ascending limb for the loop of Henle. So it comes all the way up. Another thing to point out, they also call it the nephron loop. So it comes all the way up, and then we've already talked about the distal convoluted tubule, which is here. So then from there, that's what leads to uh, number six. So this is what's known as the collecting duct. So the collecting duct comes all the way down here until it gets to the renal papilla, which is here. So then this is what will lead to so remember, urine is flowing down in this direction. And then from there, we get into the papillary ducts. So those collecting ducts, they'll merge together. That's where these papillary ducts are. Until we get to the minor calyces, and then the urine is flowing in this direction. All right, so that's going to do it for this video.